Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about recognizing and managing anxious thoughts. This is a listener question and answer. Now, we get a lot of mail about anxious thoughts, and I suffered with anxious thoughts. Not everybody has their anxiety profoundly lodged in their mind and their thoughts. Many people, it is actually quite physical. Some people have both. So today's listener, though, has a question about managing these anxious, or as she called them, scary thoughts. So I want to say a big thank you to our listener who sent in today's question. And I want to offer any of you out there who would like to send in a question or ask about a subject matter to send it to anxiety coaches podcast at gmail.com. Or you can go to the website and send a question in through the website. Many of the things that I talk about here on the show are from questions. I don't always read the questions because it's often a culmination of many of the different emails that came all lumped in together when I bring up a subject. But I would love to hear from you. And perhaps your question could be one that I could read on the show. So a big thank you to our listener who sent in today's question. They said, several months ago, I began experiencing a very high level of anxiety. It feels like it came from out of the air. Perhaps long COVID since I suffered with the virus at the end of 2022. It's been horrible, and I've seen my world shrink down in size. The one area where I have the most difficulty is in scaring myself continually. It's like negative thoughts on steroids. I always stop, sit down, and focus on my breath. Sometimes the scary thoughts and feelings are so awful that I find focusing on meditating is very hard because these thoughts slip through. I have a wonderful, compassionate, cognitive behavioral therapist working on a bit of medication, but the scaring myself with the terrifying thoughts is especially tough. Any suggestions? Thank you for sending that question in. And first off, I'm glad that you have support with your therapist. And we don't talk about medication here. So I'm glad that you have support, that you are taking care of what you need. And we're going to jump into the stuff that is scaring you. Dealing with negative, anxious thoughts really can be challenging. But there are things that you can try to stop scaring yourself, and to actually manage the thoughts more effectively. So I first off want to mention that I want you to recognize and acknowledge the thoughts. This is of primary importance. Start by becoming aware of your negative thoughts and recognizing them as anxious or irrational, meaning that your imagination has gotten involved. Understand that these thoughts are not necessarily based on reality or facts. This is a big help because most people default to the idea of, I thought this thought, so it must be coming from me, and it must be something true. Well, that's not how it works. Just because something passed through our mind does not make it true. Seeing thoughts as that, just thoughts, and that they have no intrinsic meaning unless you give them meaning, can clear out a lot of the fear and trepidation the wild thoughts can cause when you are believing them automatically. We all have thoughts that are not factual. They are not things that we are 
planning to do or doing or things we even care about. They are just passing thoughts. Now we can work on being a better gatekeeper of what we are going to give our attention to and what we can let just pass on by. And this is where meditation can be such a big help. By sitting on purpose in a safe place on a daily basis with our minds, we can begin to see what our mind is up to. And because we know we are safe and sound, we can be with the wild thoughts and practice letting them pass on by. We notice them. We don't try to push them away. We don't worry that they have gotten in somehow. We let them be there. We acknowledge them. And we practice letting them continue their journey, passing on by. The more we do this on the meditation cushion, so to speak, the easier over time we can let the wild, scary thoughts pass on by in daily life when we are not in meditation. We learn it in meditation, and then we are able to call it up more easily in life, but it takes practice. Our listener who wrote the email said that they would, quote, always stop, sit down, and focus on my breath, end of quote. The more we practice a meditation, the less we will have to rely on stopping in our daily life. We can keep doing what we were doing, and we will default to letting intrusive thoughts pass on by. That becomes our new default. We used to fall into immediately getting scared and letting the amygdala send more stress hormones, the message to our body to let out more stress hormones, and just reigniting any little ember of flame that might have been in there. And we're off and running again. We're afraid again. But I want to stress here that it takes a lot of practice and time to get to where we don't default to the scary place anymore. So don't be hard on yourself. Just keep practicing. Don't say it's not working. I'm not getting anywhere. Just remember that this takes time and practice. Every time we let a scary or intrusive thought pass on by, the stronger that reaction becomes, that new reaction, that new response is the better word. The stronger that response becomes and the weaker the old knee-jerk reaction to be filled with fear becomes. Now, this strengthening and weakening happens at the same time. We are building the new connection to our new response and dismantling the old reaction at the same time. And it happens by being aware of what is going on and that we are aware that we can choose a different action. Our listener also said, quote, sometimes the scary thoughts and feelings are so awful that focusing on meditation is very hard because these thoughts slip through, end of quote. This is an excellent point. And yes, that is exactly what the scary or intrusive or even silly or simply meaningless thoughts do. That is not your mind doing something or your mind not working right or your mind being broken. No, your mind is doing what minds do, thinking thoughts. One estimate is that we think about 70,000 thoughts per day, seven zero thousand thoughts per day, and that according to the National Science Foundation, 80% of our thoughts are negative, and 95% of our thoughts are repetitive. We understand the negativity as we are built with a negative bias. We are built that way to survive. But we also have the capacity with our beautiful brains that we have to choose where we will place our attention. With the knowledge that we have this multitude of thoughts and that they are not going to all be important or factual, we can add a little direction and let many of those thoughts pass on by. 
we cannot give attention to 70,000 thoughts a day. And if we remember that 95% of them are repetitive and 80% of them are negative, I think we can be letting a lot of them just slide on by. We don't have to take them home with us. It sounds simple, and it is. It's actually simple, but it takes practice. Another thing I want you to keep in mind is that I want you to challenge your thoughts. You can challenge your thoughts. Once you have identified a negative thought, question its validity. Ask for evidence to support or refute these thoughts. Ask yourself if there's any proof to support your fears or if there might be alternative explanations. This is a great place to pull your journal out because you can actually write down, especially if it is a repetitive, intrusive, negative thought. You can write it down, put them all down on the left-hand column and on the right-hand side of the paper in another column. You can actually Look for evidence to support or refute those thoughts. It's beautiful to put them in the journal because you get to look at them. You get to see them with your own eyes. And let me tell you, they begin to look different when they're not just rolling around in your head. You know, the mind will not always be accurate. It will tell you this thought is very important. And then when you put it on paper, you're like, that isn't important at all. That's why it's important to get it out of your head. Maybe talk to your therapist about these or put them on paper. And on the right-hand column, look for the evidence or ask yourself if there's any proof to support such a fear or if there could be an alternative explanation. Next, you can begin to practice cognitive reframing. Now, you could replace your negative thoughts with more realistic and positive ones, but let's Be real here. If we have 70,000 thoughts a day and 80% of them are negative, we want to be careful that we are not spending our entire lifetime reframing negative thoughts. It's not necessary. But if there is something that you are strongly attached to or believing, you could work on that by reframing it. We don't have to reframe or turn each negative thought into a positive. We don't have the luxury of doing that in our lives. That's it would take our entire days. It's all we would be doing. But if you have one that is particularly sticky or worrisome, you can reframe it by focusing on a more balanced, rational, or constructive perspective. For example, if you're consistently thinking about a worst case scenario, try to envision more realistic and positive outcomes. Because it could just be that you could have a realistic, positive outcome. Next, you could use positive affirmations. These can be helpful. And it would be important for you to develop your own list of positive statements or affirmations. Now we have other episodes on affirmations, and you can go back and listen to those and see what you could pull from those that feel good to you. What feels good to you might not feel good to the next person and vice versa. So these have to be of importance to you. Statements or affirmations that counteract your negative thoughts. And you can Repeat these to yourself, or you can put them on sticky notes and have them places where you can be reminded to say those to yourself. You can repeat these affirmations to yourself whenever you notice anxious thinking patterns popping up. Examples could be statements like, I am strong and capable of handling challenges. Because you are strong and capable of handling challenges. If you've had a day of anxiety and you're still standing, you are capable of handling challenges. So remind yourself of that. Remind yourself of what you have been through and what you can handle and what you do handle on a daily basis. Or you could say, I choose to focus on the present and let go of unnecessary worries because you are choosing to focus on the present and you are going to let go of the unnecessary worries in the process. 
It can be very helpful. Again, these are extras. The main point that I want you to remember is to recognize and acknowledge your thoughts. Just knowing that you are not crazy, you are not broken, there is not something wrong with your mind, your amygdala is on guard. And once we get the nervous system calmed down enough that the amygdala can stand down and you can fall back into your parasympathetic nervous system when there's not an emergency happening, these thoughts will relax. They're not going to completely go away. We all have thoughts that come and go, but the more you can practice on letting them go, they come and go, so let them go. The more you can practice that in meditation, again, the easier it will be for you to not be distressed by them when they pop up in everyday life. You could also practice mindfulness and grounding techniques. Now, this is super important because we want to stay mindful. When we're anxious, when we're having thoughts arise, bring your attention to the present moment. I love that our listener said, I always stop, sit down and focus on my breath. And why do I love that? Because that is mindfulness. Focusing on your breath can only be happening in the present moment. She is being where she is. And this is so helpful when our attention is in the present moment. We can also engage in mindfulness exercises such as doing breathing exercises, continuing our meditation practice, using the body scan, which is on our website. You can go to anxietycoachespodcast.com and click the body scan tab and get the body scan. These help to anchor ourselves and reduce the impact of the negative thoughts because we come back to the present moment. Our negative thoughts are usually worries about the future or regrets about the past. And now we just had an episode on how to let those go on episode 930, a guided meditation to help you let go of some of that baggage. Practice these mindfulness and grounding type of techniques so that you are strong when those thoughts pop up. Because if you are anxious, you are thinking about stuff that you're not in right now. There are things about the future. It may even be for five minutes from now, but that's still the future. So just gently bring yourself back to your breath. Oh, okay, breathing. And you don't have to spend a lot of time here. One breath will do. One breath to remind yourself you're here in the here and now. Now remember, managing negative, anxious thoughts takes time and practice. I want you to be patient with yourself and celebrate even small steps that you make. I hope this show has been helpful for you. And I hope that if you have someone in your life who would benefit from hearing some of the things we talk about here at ACP, that you will share the show with them. We love when you do that. And now for today's quote. The man who removes a mountain begins by carrying away small stones. And that's a Chinese proverb. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.